Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So we're going to continue with our Space Marine Codex review. Um, we've had a few parts up already. Um, so this is the next one. We're going to be doing troop choices uh, in this one. There are only four in the Codex. So there isn't loads there, but obviously pretty vital in the sense that in, in pretty much any army we you have to take troops. So it's certainly worth having an in-depth look at them and, and see what the options are uh, and what kind of combos you can come up with really. Um, there may be uh, some stratagems or uh, chapter tactics or characters in the future that um, allow you to take other things as troops, but it seems pretty unlikely, really. Um, so the only really way to get, uh, but just because they're not in this codex. So if they're not in this codex, I think the chances are they're not going to do them or not in a hurry. Um, so the only real way around it is to when you're like getting your detachments together is take. One of the three elite ones, rather and maybe one troop or no troop ones. Uh, of course, then generally they go out less command points often. So you've then got the flip side of that. So troops are, as they always have been, pretty vital in Warhammer 40,000. So let's have a look at what we've got. Let's have a look at what we are provided with as Space Marine players or Primaris players or however you want to look at it. So the first choice is a tactical squad just sort of a, a standard tactical squad in a lot of ways as we know it but i do think they've got a little bit better for a couple of reasons uh, in the new codex so they've got the same stat lines they've sort of always had they've gone down to leadership seven um i believe they were eight basic before sergeant's leadership eight but that's okay because leadership works a little differently now. Um, if it is obviously a stat gone down, but if you look at the wider game, leadership seven is actually quite solid, so that's that's fine. Uh, apart from that, they are exactly the same. Weapon skill, ballistic skill three plus. You know, they obviously were weapon skill, ballistic skill four. You get one sergeant and four marines. You can have an additional five marines. Everyone's armed with a bolt gun, bolt pistol, frag, and crack grenades. So in, in every way, it's very similar. Um, Weapons-wise, we've been through all of these. So um, like I said, I'm going to skip some options. So if you haven't seen the uh, previous parts, every weapon I skip, I will have gone through before. Um, but I'm sure you can imagine what bolt pistols and bolt guns and frag and crack grenades do. Anyway, they have and they shall know no fear. So that's cool. They also have combat squads, so you can still... Um, split them it is uh, before they're deployed as well so it's it's exactly as it were before really but there are a couple of reasons why I think tactical swords got a little bit better number one is the way they're armed so the sergeant can replace his bolt pistol and bolt gun with items from the sergeant equipment list cool kind of as it was this is the bit so if the unit contains less than 10 models one space marine replaces bolt gun with an item from the special weapons or heavy weapons list now, I might be wrong, please put it in the comment section, but I'm convinced that before, you couldn't take a heavy weapon unless it was a 10-man squad. You could take the special weapon, so that's the same. But I didn't think you had the choice of taking a heavy weapon. So in theory, you can have five-man tactical squads now with a last cannon and just kind of have four guys as sort of meat shields for the last cannon, especially as how good last cannons are now. Um, it's a cheap way to get a few of extra of those in your army, potentially. But you can still take the special weapon. If the unit contains 10 models, one Space Marine will replace bolt gun with an item from the special weapons list, and one other Space Marine replaces bolt gun item with uh, replaces bolt gun with an item from the heavy weapons list. So the 10-man squad is exactly the same. It's um, a special weapon and a heavy weapon, but it's just that choice to have a heavy weapon in a five-man squad, not a combat squad. You know, a tactical squad that's been split up, an actual basic in your list five-man squad. I'm sure that wasn't the case before. So that's one reason why I think they've got better. Another reason I think they got better is, is, is obviously the ability to split fire now. Tactical squad's problem was always that there was usually a weapon, whether it was the bolt gun, the special weapon, the heavy weapon, that didn't want to fire at the unit you were firing at. Or, if they all did, it made the unit very one-dimensional. And the whole point is they're supposed to be tactical squads or flexible squads, or however you want to look at it. Whereas now you can do that, you can have your bolt guns and you can have a heavy bolter, thinking you know that will generally shoot the same sort of stuff. But then have a melter gun and just go... If a tank, this can be my defensive unit, they can sit at the back hosing infantry down, and if a tank or dreadnought drop pods in or something like that, you've got a mount gun with a genuine chance to do some serious damage. Um, so I, I, you know, I quite like that, um, and, and they can uh, they can split fire, you know, and or you can have a plasma gun in there um, that could actually shoot at the same sort of tank, so as the mount gun's quite short range. Uh, plasma gun that shoots at a separate target, shoots at some terminators. 
whereas the bolt guns and heavy bolts shoot at um, some tactical marines. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, tactical marines are do, 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 do. Uh, troops. Where are we there? Uh, they are 13 points, so I think they've also gone down a point. Again, I believe they were 14 points before. Again, could be wrong. I think they might have even gone down a point. I mean, I know it's not amazing, but every little counts. You've got two squads of 10, that's 20 points saved. I oh, well, you know, every little bit. But I think tactical squads are pretty good. Um, they're quite a bit cheaper than their Primaris brothers, which we'll look at now. But they, they do have to be, because the Primaris are significantly better. Um... So yeah, I think tactical squads are actually more flexible and more uh, realistic to take than they were before. Um, the the only sort of thing stopping you taking them really is the Primaris Marines. Um, so we'll move on to them now. So we've got the Intercessor Squad. So the tactical squad of the Primaris, if you like. Um, they've got the same stat line as the Space Marines, but they have two wounds and two attacks. That's the difference. The two attacks is good, obviously gives them a bit more chance of combat, but it's mainly those two wounds. That's that's the real thing you're paying for. Uh, they come as an uh, intercessor sergeant and four intercessors, exactly the same. They can have another five, exactly the same. And they come with frag crack grenades and bolt pistol bills, so they come with a bolt rifle. That's the other advantage. So whereas a bolt gun is 24 inches, rapid fire one, strength four, AP dash damage one, the bolt rifle is 30 inches, so it's got six inch more range. Rapid Fire 1, that's the same. Strength 4, Damage 1, that's the same. But AP minus 1. So having AP minus 1 and 6 inches further range is a, you know, that's a big difference. So having that better gun and an extra attack and an extra wound, I would say for 7 points, because they're 20 points each, is well worth it. That's my own personal opinion. I, I think 7 points is... If it was just the attacks and the bolt rifle, I'd think... Mm, it's okay, but I don't really want them in combat anyway, so I'll probably save the points out of the tactical marines. But the um, the, the extra wounds just brilliant. Um, so I, I think personally the intercessors are better value. But there's nothing wrong with having tactical marines. We're talking by you know a point. If if there were 21 points, I'd think well that's probably about right. So it's it's just just that little bit. And personally, I think they're better models as well. Um, they they look brilliant. They're they're kind of the size I always thought space marines would be. So. I like them for that reason as well. So um, they have a nation no fear. They can have an auxiliary grenade launcher, uh, which, if a model is armed with an auxiliary grenade launcher, increase the range of any grenade weapons they have by. Th they have up to thirty inches. <laughs> I thought it said by thirty inches. Like my goodness, that's a, a lot. Um, so obviously that means you can use things like uh, frag and crack grenades at long range, which is which is actually quite cool. Um, just load it in, fire it off. I think that's quite funky. Uh, they can break down into combat squads as well, although a lot of people are probably going to take five-man squads or six-man squads anyway because they're more expensive, um, but you can do that if you want to. Uh, they can replace their bolt rifles with auto bolt rifles or stalker bolt rifles. So this is another reason why they're probably better because you have that flexibility to pick these weapons. I'm just going to check if they um, cost anything. The auto bolt rifle is one point. The bolt rifle is zero points, so as base they are 20 points. And the stalker bolt rifle, which is incredibly cool because it's got a scope, uh, is two points. So they do go up in points, so they, I'll, I'll let you know what the stats are for them. So the stalker bolt rifle is 36 inch range, so it's an extra 6 inch range on the bolt rifle. It's heavy one, so it is heavy and you're only ever going to get one shot. But it is AP minus two, not AP minus one, still strength four damage one. So in general, depends how you're setting them up if they're a backfield unit potentially worth it because the heavy doesn't really matter and the rapid fire doesn't really matter because you're not going to get rapid fire that often you've got more range so you're more likely to be in range and then and so the only real difference is AP minus 2 rather than minus 1 and so it's like okay maybe it's worth paying those points but these guys are generally going to be moving around whether in transports or on foot I, I would say anyway so the, the, I prefer the Rapid Fire 1 with the minus 1 probably, especially as I'm saving points by taking it. Then you've got the Auto Bolt Rifle, which is 6 inch less range, but it's still 24 inches, there's nothing to worry about. It's Strength 4 AP Dash Damage 1, so no AP, but it's Assault 2, so you don't have to worry about moving, and you've got 2 shots every turn, so obviously it's just like a fully automatic Bolt Rifle really. 
and um, so you know those ten that ten man squads unleashing twenty shots every turn, uh, which is quite nice. But then you've got no minus to the save, so th they're they're pretty equal. Um, but I probably end up mostly going with the bolt rifle because it's it's the middle ground. It's the cheapest. I think it's probably the best. Again, it depends on combos because again, if you've got a commander nearby to the stalker squad, so they're re-rolling hits. All of a sudden, it's like okay, it's only one shot each, but we're re-rolling hits, so we're going to hit with basically all of them, and we get the AP minus two. Maybe it's now worth paying for, you know. So, um, auto bolt rifles again, the shorter range. But again, if if you're in a rhino and you this is going to be one of your objective grabbing units, then again, you're going to be getting in close and nasty anyway. So again, the lesser range doesn't really matter, and you just want to get out that rhino and volley them with those twenty shots. So it does depend on what you want, but I, I mostly stick with the bolt rifle to be honest. Um, so the the squad's going to cost you well for five of them, it's it's um, hundred points. So it's not actually too expensive, really, um, given how tough they are. Um, it's when you start adding extras that they start going up in cost quite quickly. So now we've got the Scout Squad, good old faithful Scout Squad. Um, one of the great things with the Scout Squads now is they've got um, six inch movement, so they're pretty, they're reasonably fast for infantry, but they have weapon skill, ballistic skill three plus, and strength and toughness four, so they've kept the strength and toughness four. They're as skilled as a Marine in theory now, which is really nice, so they are pretty reliable. Um, in fact, they've got the exact same stat line as a Space Marine, apart from the fact they have a four plus save. But given the fact they're pretty much always going to be in cover, they effectively do have a 3 plus save. So they are worth looking at. Um, you get a scout sergeant and four scouts, you can have an additional five. Each is armed with a bolt gun, bolt pistol, fragment, crack grenades. So we haven't covered a couple of the weapons here, so I'll be going through some weapons. They have a nation known fear, combat squads, but then they have two other things. So concealed positions basically means they can appear more than nine inches from the enemy. Standard sort of thing. Camo cloaks, though. If every one of the units camo cloak, you can add two to the same throw for units in cover rather than one, which means these guys have a two up save in cover. So that's something really worth thinking about because we'll be seeing the cost of these guys soon. And if it's pretty good, again, if you're looking for that backfield unit, you could have 10 of these at the back with snipers, meaning, of course, you can pick out characters. Um, just taking pot shots all game effectively. Maybe you can give one of them a rocket launcher because again he can split fire and take take a tank out maybe. Um, and unless you're in combat or you've got good negating cover, um, they're gonna be pretty hard to shift. They really are gonna be pretty hard to shift. Even if you're AP minus one, they're like, well, still on three ups, um, which is not bad at all. Um, so the scout sergeant may replace his bolt pistol and bolt gun with items from the sergeant equipment list. Any model may replace his bolt gun with a sniper rifle and a starty shotgun or a combat knife. One scout may replace his bolt gun with a heavy bolt or missile launcher and any model may take a camo cloak. So the combat knife is completely standard, you just get an additional attack for it. It's you, your own strength, damage one, no AP, etc. You just get one additional attack. Sniper rifle is 36 inches, so it's good range. Heavy one, but they're going to be staying still anyway. Strength four, AP dash, damage one. But weapon can target a character even if it's not the closest unit and if you roll a 6 to wound for the weapon it inflicts a mortal wound in addition to the damage. So you know if, if you average that sort of thing out, if, if, if there's 10 of them firing, I'm going to fire your commander, I'm hitting on 3 so I get 7 hits roughly. It is strength 4 and there's no sniper uh, like 4 plus to wound anymore so that is a slight worry that a lot of cut characters are toughness 5 so you're going to be wounding on 5s but assuming you're wounding on 4s you should get about 3.5 wounds which is you know making them make a few saves on their basic save but it's still forcing some saves that characters aren't used to uh, especially maybe a weak character like a, like a psycho who's only got like a 5 up save or something. But also, you've got basically a 50% chance of getting a mortal wound in addition as well, because you've got effectively three and a half dice, so there's a 50% chance you're all a six. So it's not too bad. Um, it's not too bad. They're not brutally effective, but they're okay. Uh, the heavy bolter is 36 inches, heavy three, strength five, AP minus one, damage one, so it's a pretty solid weapon. Missile launcher is 48 inches, you can fire frag, which is heavy D6, strength four, AP dash damage one, or crack missile, which is heavy one, strength eight, AP minus two, and D six damage. 
pretty nice as long as they're cheap enough I, I would take one of those just to fire at something else I'd probably take the missile launcher and unless you particularly want to hit the same people the snipers are shooting at so it's not a character um, he can just take pot shots of tanks all game because it's it's the crack missile launcher has got a lot better I think cause it's strength 8 so it's 4s or 3s to wound vast majority of vehicles which it wouldn't have been before AP minus 2 is not bad most vehicles have a 3 plus save they're now on 5 plus and it does d6 damage, same as the last cannon. So it's not incredible, but it's. It, I definitely think it's got bad. I, you know, I can really see units of missile launcher devastators because I think they'll be cheap, and those four crap missiles won't be to won't be sniffed at. Uh, obviously, you have got the chance of the frag missiles as well, which aren't terrible. Finally, you've got the starty shotgun, which is 12 inches, assault two, strength four, AP dash damage one. If you're in half range, it becomes strength five, which is a nifty little rule. So if you're planning on putting um, scouts in a um, storm and you're going to get up close it's it's a pretty handy weapon it's it's a two shot ball gun that's strength five at close range so it's again not to, not to be sniffed at um, so let's see how much these guys are because I've got a bit of hope for these guys so scout squads are 11 so admittedly they're not much cheaper than a tactical marine but I suppose as, as I've said they've got all the same stats really so they can't be the sniper rifle will put you about four points so a sniper rifle instantly puts you as Two points more than a marine, probably worth it, um, to be honest. But camo cloaks as well, a three points, starting to get a bit too expensive now. So sniper rifle and camo cloak makes them eighteen points a model. You're only two points less than a primaris, and I appreciate you've got a sniper rifle, but they've got a bolt rifle, so you're not winning by that much on the weapon stakes. And yes, you've got plus two save in cover, but you've got to be in cover. Um, and then, whereas the Primus always have a three plus save, and they've got the two wounds, and they've got the two attacks. I think scouts are a bit expensive. I'm, I'm really gutted, actually, because I looked at those rules, and I looked at the stat line, and I thought they could be really good, but I think they're too expensive. I think they're not too bad in a storm. Little five-man unit, because you won't be taking camo cloaks, so that takes some points off. You won't be taking sniper rifles, because... If you take the other stuff, a starting shotguns are free, uh, the bolt gun they have is free, bolt pistols and combat knives are free. So if you want to approach it that way, I think scouts could be worth it, considering they're basically a marine with one less save. Um, but the sniper rifle coming for cloak, having your sleeves a bit expensive. But leave your thoughts in the comment section, guys, because I might be being a bit harsh because they might snipe off characters better than I think they do. And like I say, they've got that missile on shoulder, they're going to have to pay for that as well. <clears throat> so you've got a bit of tank busting ability there. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh. And actually, in three rounds of shooting, which you can reasonably expect them to get, um, they'd knock off you know, a, a five, six wound character who's, who's even got like a three up save. And you're like, oh, actually, that's that's like an 150 point character, potentially. That's that's You've paid some points for that. Um You know, and these guys are pretty much paid for themselves in points, but also obviously they've killed a character, which is pretty important. So, yeah, may maybe, maybe scouts. I'm just a little too. If they were 16 points, fine, but 18 just seems a little too much, just a little bit. Um, finally, the last last troop choice. Um, like I said, there was only a few um, in the new book. Is the uh, Crusader squad. Um, so this is the Black Templar um, unit, although um, I will say, although the faction keyword is Black Templar, I suppose as long as you're happy for your commander's abilities to not work on them, you could take them in other armies. If you if you wanted to make a homebrew chapter or you thought, you know, the Imperial Fists are kind of crusading, so why can't they use it? You could potentially actually... Um, use it, you just have to hack that your Crimson Fist guy, his abilities wouldn't help the Black Templar unit. But yeah, so you know, there's some flexibility, but obviously, mainly a Black Templar unit here. Um, you have Initiates, which are basically Space Marines, the exact same stat line, Neophytes, which are Scouts with the exact same stat line, and Sword Brothers, which are basically the Sergeants, an extra attack, extra lead ship. So, sort of standard stuff. You can have up to 10 Initiates, 10 Neophytes in the unit. Every model starts with bolt gun, bolt pistol, frag and crack grenades. Um, the standard sort of use for this unit, because you don't want to charge up the board and slowly get shot, is in the Land Raider Crusader, which is also kind of a Black Templar invention. 
it's got 16 capacity, so you take 10 initiates, 5 neophytes, or maybe shotguns just to give you an extra punch on the way in, and um, a character like a chaplain to give them all rerolls, and then there's just so many attacks with your rerolls um, that you can overwhelm people. So that could be a viable tactic still in the new edition, I think. Um, or you could take smaller squads and rhinos, but then you'd probably just take an initiate squad unless you're trying to save points. So uh, that, that's, or, or you could put them in Storm Raven potentially, um, but the Crusader's sort of the standard outlay. So we've been through all their weapons, I think. Um, oh no, there is a few sergeant options. So we've got Power Axe, which is plus one strength, AP minus two, damage one. Power Fist, which is times two strength, AP minus three, damage three, minus one to hit. Power Maul, which is plus two strength, AP minus one, damage one. And Power Sword, which is strength of the user, AP minus three, damage one. The good thing with these, I find that all these weapons are now really even. It's really kind of like, what do you want to do with the weapon? Um, what kind of character you're building? So like the Power Maul has plus two strength, but minus one AP, but the Power X has plus one strength, minus two AP. So it's, you know, really like, ooh, what do you do? And then the Power Fist is way stronger, but obviously you have the minus one to hit, so. Yeah, I quite like the way they're balanced out now. Um, so they have Initiate on Ophia. Uh, neophytes can replace the bolt gun with shotgun or combat knife. One Initiate and release the bolt gun with an item from heavy weapons or a power sword, power axe, power maul, or power fist. So that's cool. So the Initiates can have some special weapons. <clears throat> One Initiate may replace his bolt gun with an item from the special weapons, so he has to have a special weapon rather than a combat weapon. Any initiate may replace this shotgun with a chainsaw, which I'd recommend because obviously you're running into combat. Plus, these starty shotguns and the scouts will give you a little bit of kick anyway. And the saw brother may replace this bolt pistol and bolt gun with items from the sergeant equipment list. So you can have a couple of special weapons in there, not loads. You can have a couple of combat specialists and a say a melter gun in case you're getting near a tank or something like that. Because you're getting so many attacks, and especially with a chaplain there rerolling hits, I very much recommend those special weapons are power fists or something equivalent. So you can take on dreadnoughts and vehicles because your mass attacks will kill pretty much anything else, apart from maybe terminators with their two wounds now and two up save. So the Crusader squad, exactly the same point. So initiates are 13 like tactical marines, neophytes are 11 like scouts. So they're they're perfectly good value. Um, you're not adding camera clicks and sniper rifles to the scouts. Just give them a starty shotgun just for a bit of like say extra kick and a couple of special weapons in there and hook them up in a Land Raider Crusader and they'll probably be as effective as they sort of always have been really. And you know, probably cheaper than a Terminator squad as well, to be honest, so not bad value either. So that's the end of this uh, part guys, that's the troops. Uh, only four choices, but I wanted to go a bit more in depth with them because they're obviously quite important as I mentioned earlier. Let me know what you think of them, let me know what you'll be taking in the comments section, let me know what you think of the review, please like and subscribe. Um, help me do some more videos and I'll be back soon with the next part in which we're going to cover fast attack which should be interesting there's some really good choices in there so please check back soon see you soon